Hey there, I'm Jen, and welcome back to The Magic in the Music, where we discuss Disney, music, DVC, and family fun. Today we have a DVC topic for you. Write a first refusal, also known as Rofer. I know, it sounds like the name of your neighbor's dog, but it's actually a really important Disney Vacation Club resale term. In this video, I'll be explaining what Rofer is, how it works, and how it may impact your DVC resale purchase. If you're not familiar with Disney Vacation Club, you'll definitely want to check out our playlist on DVC. We have tons of informational videos for you, so if you're researching DVC, this channel is the place to be. Before we get started, I want to remind you that you can find more from us at themagicinthemusic.com, including our shop where you can get fun vacation and music theme products like this one. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon, where we share behind the scenes insights with our patrons. We are not sponsored by any DVC related business so that we're able to maintain our objectivity and be your objective source for DVC info. We very much appreciate any kind of support you can give to the channel to help us remain that way. Okay, so let's get started with right of first refusal. So you found the perfect Disney Vacation Club resale contract and you're ready to make an offer. But before you do, it's important that you understand the right of first refusal process. It's the major hurdle in completing a resale purchase of a DVC contract. Now, you need to keep in mind that this is different than making a direct DVC purchase. That is to say you buy the points directly from Disney Vacation Club. That is a different process and really a faster and more streamlined, but much more expensive process. Today, we are talking about this important step in the resale process, which is going to save you a lot of money. Rofer or right of first refusal is a process which gives Disney the right to purchase a DVC resale contract before it's sold to another party. This means that before your offer can be accepted, Disney has the opportunity to review the purchase and the contract themselves. While this can be annoying, it's also the key to keeping DVC values up. Since Disney can buy back any contracts that they view as under market value, they are essentially able to control the resale market value of these contracts. At least they can ensure that they don't fall below certain prices. I cannot understate how important this is in helping our contracts to maintain their value over the long term. If Disney decides to buy a contract in the Rofer process, we refer to this as Disney taking the contract, they will step into the place of the buyer and they'll purchase the contract under the same terms that were agreed upon by the buyer and the seller. So while this process can be really frustrating for the prospective buyer, it's fine for the seller. They're going to get their money either way. So if you are the seller, Rofer is really not a big deal for you. Perhaps the most agonizing part about Rofer is that as a buyer, you will have to wait approximately 30 days for a decision from Disney. We purchased our resale contracts at a less busy time of year, both times. So we've experienced wait times of roughly three weeks each time, but some buyers have to wait upwards of 30 days for a decision. And anyone who has bought resale will tell you that it is a painful three to four weeks. Really, really, really painful. It feels like forever. And you will inevitably see other appealing contracts go on the market while you're waiting. Trust me, the second you get tied up in a deal, you'll instantly see something awesome show up. It's a universal truth of buying DVC resale. It happened to us every single time. Just trust me when I say that this process feels really painfully slow. Be ready for this. So the wait is over and you have one of two possible outcomes as a buyer. You pass Rofer, yay, you're going to be purchasing that contract and the deal can move forward or Disney takes the contract and you're back to square one, offering on another DVC resale listing. If Disney takes that contract, you're done. That's it. Game over. You can't get that contract and you need to restart your search. If you are searching for something that's a little bit of a unicorn and it's hard to find, this could be really, really frustrating because you might have waited for months to find that perfect contract. On the other hand, if you have parameters that are a little bit wider and you have a lot of choices, maybe no big deal. You just jump right back in and uh, make an offer on another contract. That's what we did when this happened to us. Yes, we have experienced having a contract taken by Disney as part of the right of first refusal process. And it's awful. 
So are there any strategies to avoid getting caught by the Rofer monster, as some members call it? Well, yes and no. There's good news and bad news. <laughs> While there are some best practices, sometimes it just feels random. Many have tried to figure out the secret to DVC Rofer buybacks, and well, we haven't really figured it out yet. Maybe we never will. It seems to depend a lot on how much capital Disney has to spend on these contracts at the time and which resorts they would like to add to their inventory to resell as, you guessed it, direct fully priced points. Yes, this is where most of these points come from that you buy directly from these quote unquote sold out resorts. So let's talk about the best practices to avoid having a contract snapped up in right of first refusal. First, be careful about price. I'm not saying that aggressively negotiating a good price is a bad thing. I'm always up for a good deal. So the goal here is to submit a contract for Rofer that's a good price, just not a crazy, crazy low price. If the price is way below other contracts available on the market at the time, it is likely to be taken by Disney. On the other hand, if you don't mind taking a gamble, you can always try getting a screaming deal and roll the dice with Rofer. It's up to you. Just know that you may lose valuable time doing that. And sometimes things with really low prices do make it through Rofer. It's kind of a gamble, but certainly the lower your price, the bigger gamble you're taking. It's really going to depend a lot on your risk tolerance and your timeline and probably your budget as well. The next best practice is to buy a contract at a resort that Disney is not currently buying back. How would you know? Well, some DVC resale companies offer Rofer reports, such as DVC Resale Market, and I believe there are others doing the same thing as well. They share data on their sales each month, and you can see which resorts are being taken by Disney. Let's take a quick look at the most recent Rofer report from DVC Resale Market. Here you can see that they've provided information on the highest monthly buyback numbers by DVC Resort. And you can see that uh, there was kind of higher price back in January of 2022. So a year ago, the prices were higher. If you look at all these NAs, these are resorts that were not bought back. Now, it's really important to remember, and when you're looking at this report, this is for this company. So this is DVC Resale Market. One of the reasons that this report is pretty valuable is that they are kind of a leading reseller um, in, in the market. And so they have a high volume of contracts to look at. So it's probably a better sample size than perhaps a smaller company. So I think this is really valuable information to look at when you are trying to uh, look for some patterns in right of first refusal. So you can see here that they were buying back Copper Creek in January of 2023, but they didn't buy back anything else. So if you were wanting to get a crazy, amazing deal on Copper Creek, seems like more likely that they're going to be buying back Copper Creek contracts. Let's say you wanted to buy Grand Floridian resale. Well, it's not even on the list. They haven't apparently even been buying it back at all in 2022. For obvious reasons, they're currently selling the expansion at Grand Floridian. So Anyway, you can see that there is some strategy behind the resort that you're buying. Of course, you need to buy the resort that's the best one for you. And if the one that they're buying back a lot happens to be the resort you want, sometimes you just got to take the risk and go for it. Another strategy for avoiding Disney taking your contract in Rofer is to review the Rofer boards on Disboards and you can reference pricing. This will help you get a better view of what the pricing is currently like for these different resorts. So let's take a look at the Rofer boards on Disboards. Okay, here we are at Disboards.com. This is a really, really good resource for finding information about Disney Vacation Club resale. So we're going to go down to uh, the Disney Vacation Club uh, forums here. We're going to go into Purchasing DVC. And you'll see right usually on this first list you have Rofer thread. So we can look at January to March because that's where we are right now. And you can see that there are directions here. They actually have a little link. If you are going to be contributing to this list with your own uh, purchase, which I have done in the past, um, you know, this gives you the format for how to do that. So you're going to scroll down and you might find it helpful to look at the most recent one here. I'm actually going to use this one because it's going to have more examples. 
I wouldn't just look at the current three month period that we're in, maybe go back to the previous quarter and compare that as well, because you know it's gonna have a little more full data in it. So scroll down, this can be a little confusing sometimes. You scroll through all this, and then you finally get to this page, and it says past. It means that this buyer was allowed to complete the purchase and Disney did not buy these contracts back. So you can see that here, you know, they, they bought it for, this is the price per point, this is the total cost, the number of points, the resort code, which AKV, Animal Kingdom Villas. You can see how many points are remaining for, it's a February use year, how many points in 2021, 2022, and 2023, and this one even shows 2024. It shows when they sent it in for a decision on Rofer and when it passed. So that also gives you an idea of the current weight for Rofer. Um, so if you scroll through, you'll see codes for all these different um, resorts, Alani, Beach Club Villas, and so on. And we'll, and you can see Old Key West has extended as well. So you go on through and you can see all these ones that passed. Then you have this other list that says waiting. And the waiting list is, those are people who have submitted it for a decision and they have not yet heard back. This list is pretty short right now because this is an older thread. Then we'll go down and here we are, sad face. These were taken by Disney. So you can see here is the name of the user. We've got the price per point. You've got the total price of the contract, the points on the contract, the resort, use year, and then points remaining. You'll notice here it also says that the seller pays maintenance fees for 2022. And if there's anything special going on, like seller pays closing costs and maintenance fees, things like that, you can see that they are noted here. There are several resorts that didn't have anything taken. Now, the reason that this is a really, really valuable thread, oh, there are those Copper Creek ones. The reason that this is such a valuable thread is that assuming that people are being honest with it, which I, th I think we can safely assume that most people are being honest on this thread, even if there are a few who are not, most probably are. It tells us a lot about how long the wait currently is, what resorts are being taken, and at what price they are being taken. So there's really a lot of valuable information here, and you're gonna wanna be sure to take a look at that before you submit your own contract for right of first refusal. So how likely are you to get through right of first refusal with a resale contract? Well, it's going to vary a lot. Sometimes Disney is buying back a lot of contracts and other times they're not. We've lost one of them to Disney, but we have gotten others through. So we're two for three on our resale contracts right now. And that was several years ago. We haven't purchased one, a resale contract for a few years. While it is a threat looming over your potential DVC purchase, the majority of contracts do actually make it through Rofer. So it's certainly not a reason to avoid resale but it does lengthen the timeline of the process. Of course, if budget is not an issue, but time is, you can purchase points at pretty much any of the DVC properties directly from Disney at quite a high premium. So if that's, if you just want your points tomorrow or today even, that is probably the way for you to go. But I think most people take a real close look at resale as a great option for saving a lot of money on their next DVC contract or even their first DVC contract. Tell us in the comments if you have any theories about this enigmatic Rover formula. Can you find any patterns? Have you ever lost a contract to Disney in the Rover process? What do you think it takes to pass Rover on a DVC resale contract? If you wanna learn more about how to get the most out of your DVC membership, check out this playlist right up here. You can find us at themagicinthemusic.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. Hit that like button, hit that little bell icon, and please come check out our channel as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye, everyone.